I have been beaten because I'm Indian. I have been kicked because I'm not black. I've had my hair burned because I'm not white. You cannot not be racist. It's in our water. It's in the air that we breathe. It's, it's the world that we were born it's into. It's the world that we were born into. You know, in America, you have to have a racial category. Everybody wants to know what it is. We are the only people who have to carry a card, a plastic card from the government that says how much Indian we are. I have the privilege to work on, you know, my internalized racism or not. I don't have to listen with privilege. Why do people respond like Why that? Why do people respond like that? Let this day go by without you being beaten physically, emotionally, or mentally. How much do I give up on a day-to-day -day basis to fit in? Women are bridge. Women give birth, and we suffer through our children's trials, besides our own. You try and protect your child. You want to just scream because it hurts so bad, and you know what's coming. I'm tired of it. I had to dress up as, as a celebrity, and we looked through magazines, and, but I couldn't find no one that was Latina, Chicana, Mexicana. And I ended up crying, and I felt bad. I felt I hated myself for who I was because I wasn't white and I wasn't like the people in the magazines. The more you can look like, you know, the American, you know, lighter skin, certain features, get rid of the accent, don't learn Spanish, listen to rock and roll instead of, you know, salsa. So everything was yanked away, except for one thing, which was that, you know, without question, I was Cuban. And then being very confused about who I am and who I've become. Take me to Paris, I became Parisian. Take me to Switzerland, take me to, I became whatever it took because I lived in survival. Just make it day by day. But there's a price to pay for it. Yes, I have this great exterior shell in my life, but all it takes is one crack and the inside is nothing. They call us shorim, which means black. All, the, all of you black are from the same. We don't care, Morocco, Iraq. The Ashkenazi say that. Yeah. If you tried to go into that church and you were darker than that brown bag, you could not, you could not, not get in. in. You know, it was the Latino close friends and best friends who told me you can't dance in my 15 because your partner is too dark. You can come because you're lighter. All my life, I was brought up to look as much like a white woman as possible. You straighten your hair. You stay light. I think I shared with all of you about my grandmother making me wear the hats. Mm -hmm. You know, these big hats because, Lord help us, I should get any darker mm -hmm. if I was out in the sun. Mm -hmm. When I come in with a tan or come back from a vacation or something, she always says to her friends, I bet she really is the lightest one. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't normally look like this, you know? <laughs> but your folks pinching your nose so you would look you know, as European as possible, so you wouldn't look so African. Do you know how much shit is out there about the Jewish nose? How much, like, mockery? And I was thinking, you know, I've started touching my nose recently and saying, you poor thing. <laughs> You're just sitting here to help me breathe. And like, all this hatred is on you, you know? Have you ever noticed that white people, when they look at you, they never look at black women as just being Black women. I have had a tendency to mythologize people of color. We, as biracial people, are viewed, especially women, as exotic. It was okay to be exotic and different. Mountain woman, connected to the earth and sun. I want what, I she's, want what got. she's got. I'm just a woman. You're exotic, you're easy, you're sexy, mm -hmm. you're kinky, mm -hmm. you're, and I'm like, no. I'm getting angry right now because when they make me into a goddess, damn it, I don't have feelings. I can't be the person that sits, looks at that camera right now and has feelings about stuff that's happened to me in my life because I'm a goddess, I'm big, I'm an Amazon, I'm exotic, and it's not, it, it marginalizes me, it takes the humanness out of me. I am a damn human being. You know, these things, they can either break us or strengthen us. Mm -hmm. And I think one struggle that's been really hard was for a while, all that kept me alive was my rage. Mm -hmm. That's what, that was my survival, that's was right. my rage. Mm -hmm. And it was, I don't want to stay there. Mm 
because I stay there, they've won. I understand that too. I hear all other women's stories. They're very similar. And uh, my path is really about compassion, about opening the heart, about taking risks, telling the truth, and um, showing by example. And be really gentle on ourselves and others. My disease of racism will almost always speak first that that will be something that literally is hardwired into me. <clears throat> and I want to continue to ask to be willing to be the bad example, to look real, not good. Yeah. I think we would be remiss not to be conscious of what's been passed on to yes. us. Allow all that so-called traditional stuff, or back in the day stuff, or the good old things, that stuff <laughs> needs to be dismantled and critiqued. Mm -hmm. And we see all this stuff that's affecting us as such rigid, you know, it can't change, it's monolithic, it's oppressive, and so on. But we make this stuff. It's not static. We can change it. We can resist and we can confront. It's up to us. Warrior women multiply.